I'll turn my ringer off my phone. That probably helped. Thinking about life and how many of your goals you have achieved, wondering how embracing your purpose will enable success, pause, think about it with intentional thought, and consider where we go from here. Join our co-sponsors, DomDev Enterprises and Page Investments, and our friends at Something to Think About. Ask your questions. Tell us where you are. Share, 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 and let everybody know we are live and in living color. Right now, we're going to ask you to post your questions, as we said, and when we come right back, we will have our special guest for this evening. Something to think about with Dale Happy Knowles. Welcome to something to think about with Dale Happy Knowles. What you think, we become. What we attract, we radiate. And what we imagine, we surely can achieve. Let's change the narrative two for two. So this evening we have the special fellow here up on the screen. Some people say that's my twin. I don't know why <laughs> they say that, but you know, uh, I don't know. But anyway, we can get to that in a second. But Ron Butler, some of us know him from a long time ago as Ronnie Butler. Junior, some of us know us as Ronnie, all kind of different names. And, you know, back then it was things happen. And so, welcome, Ronnie. Ron Butler. What name would you want me to call you today? Ronnie, man. Mr. President. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. No, Ron Butler is the name that was on my resume when I first started acting. Because mm -hmm. um, when I first started, there was, I believe there was another Ronnie in, um, around. Uh, so, uh, you know, everyone, all my agents and everything called me Ron. So that's the name that went on as my professional name. But, um, right, right. you know, I only get called that in professional environments and credits. Otherwise, right. everybody calls me Ronnie. Yeah, but that was practicing how to call you Ron. And I was like, what? Yeah, and so it's too, it sounds too strange. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. Yeah, Ron and Bristol, that's, that's the only one I could say, Ron. That's another classmate. Hey, so, Happy, uh, can I just interrupt you and ask, because I'm having people texting me right now going, how do they get to see the podcast right now? So how, what, that, what do I tell them? That link I sent you with the two links at the bottom. Um, okay. The, the, the thing, if you give that to them, um, they will have it. Or if they search for Dale Happy Knowles, uh, something to think, it will come up. I'm going to send, I'm gonna send it out YouTube? right now. Yeah. Some more. So Ronnie is based in LA and he is, has over a hundred films, theater, television credits, etc. And you have a number of, of people have tipped the hat to you. The independent filmmakers project. I think they changed their name recently or, um, they did some work for HBO. Mm -hmm. Then you also are the writer, a director, a producer. Um, you do narrations, um, a bunch of stuff. Uh, you could talk about some of those things. But you work a lot with Norman Lear and Brent Miller. And I've heard those names through my son um, before, who was an artist, um, when he was into film portion. Yeah, yeah know, Norman. Know um, bad, but, you know. Norman. Um... Norman is mostly known for people with people our age when we were when we were growing up um, from these old T old sitcoms on TV like the Jeffersons and All in the Family, you know, all these shows he had at one point he had, I believe at one point he had six or eight shows on primetime television all at the same time. Um, he is the he is the the um, the king of of television comedy oh, okay. mm -hmm. um, and, and not just not just funny, but also social satire. Right. If you remember, mm -hmm. the Jefferson's dealt with issues of race and interracial relationships. And mm -hmm. and, you know, it was it, it, it was funny, but it was always about something. Right. It had an edge to it. And that's what he was known for. And um, he saw his 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 um, his sort of co-producer is a young, much younger guy named Brent Miller saw my Obama video on YouTube when it when I did it many years ago 
and he showed it to Norman and they called me at my house. They got, they called my agent and got my phone number. And mm -hmm. I mean, for, for people who are our age, who know how famous this man is, this would be like, this would be like Oprah calling your mother. Right. Okay. I mean, it was like, mm -hmm. I answered the phone and this man said, you know, he was Norman Lear. And I was like, right, whatever, <laughs> you know, and I was about to hang, hang up the phone. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, mm -hmm. long story short is I had the, I had the presence of mind to invite my, to ask him to meet me at his office. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of a relationship. And, and later I, I had an idea for a short film and I pitched it and they said, yes. And they gave, they wrote me a check and I made it. And um, they've hired me to be, you know, to direct uh, small projects for them and um, to be involved in promoting new TV shows. And it's been yeah. a nice relationship. And, and Brent has become a good personal friend as well. Okay, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so you also have um, some work, some accolades here with the or multiple nominations, narrations at the Airphone Awards. And then you have the Society of Focal arts and sciences, and then you have the Audi. That's how you pronounce that one? Audi. Mm -hmm. Audi. Audi Awards. I mean, man, people, people bigging you up all over. I know. I am, I'm very, I'm, I'm flattered and I'm very honored. You know, the, um, I sort of, I, when, when um, I worked on this uh, TV show called True Jackson, it was a, and it was a regular job for me for about the three seasons that it was. Mm -hmm. And they shot on the, on the lot at Paramount. So, I mean, I was living the life. I drove onto the lot every day, you know, parked in the Paramount lot, parked in the, in the it's called the tank, but it's where they shot okay. Jaws, the exterior right. shots for Jaws and the mechanical shark, but now it's a parking lot. Right. Um, okay. And uh, I did that. And when, when that show ended, um, I went back to, you know, having a one job a month here, TV job, two or three jobs a month there. Uh, and I ended up having an opportunity to do an audio book. And I, I thought at the beginning that I was going to, it was just going to be a side gig, but it was something that, um, it uses all the skills that I had developed over all the years. And, um, you can talk about your we, skills. We want you to dab into that. Okay. There's a lot of people around here who have skills and don't know they have skills. Yeah. Uh, um, recognizing, yeah. recognizing your skills is, is, is a big part of, of being successful. You know, listen, yes. listening to what people keep telling you and what people ask you to do and how, you know, what they want from you is, you know, is the universe saying to you, this is what we want to hear from you. This is what your talents are. Okay. Uh, but so I, we, can, I, we can dive into that. But but I got to say this because I can get fussed out. OK, I don't say this. You are a proud member of the QC Queens College class of 19. Class of 1980. QC in the house. Yes. Uh, comments <laughs> as they say after we left. But anyway. Uh, you know, and they only wish that they look as good as we look today, you know. Um, Amen. If they could get to this far and still look like this. But something big when we were in school at QC was that we had a principal, and it continued on, um, Mr. Middleton, who, who pressed in our brains. I think it will never leave my head. This statement, man is maketh man. Yeah, I knew exactly what you were going to say because all of us know it. All of yeah, us know yeah. it. Mm hmm and I think that is a cornerstone that allows us to be successful in many, many, many things we do because it opens doors that many people don't get open just because they don't have manners. You know, yeah, you know, kindness, know you, kindness and respect, kindness and respect go a long way. And um, to uh, to quote another person, in addition to Mr. Middleton, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Maya Angelou says that. Um, you know, people may forget what you say, um, um, people may forget what you do, but people will never forget how you make them feel. Right. And um, simple, simple manners, simple um, kindness, um, even in business negotiations, uh, uh, goes a very long way because people remember that. You know, people right. remember that in comparison to all the bad behavior there is. And there's, a, as you know, there's a lot of bad behavior in entertainment and in the creative mm -hmm. arts. There's a lot of ego and there's a lot of narcissism. It's difficult. Right. You know, it's difficult to be a creative person without going inward, you know. So you have right. to sort of balance that out with exactly what you're talking about. Right. And another thing that we gained a lot from that school was that back then, I don't know how much it is still today because I haven't badly not gone to visit recently. Well, COVID helped. I could use the COVID excuse. Okay, anyway. go, go, do, go with that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it was a multifaceted school. And so we had a lot of academics, um, all of the traditional, the sciences and everything else. And then we also had, they quill, drilled you with the sports, even though we might not have been that great overall in all sports. But craft and, and, and I don't know what you call it, home economics and all that. Yeah, kind of home stuff. act. We called it, it, then it was called cookery. It was cookery and needlework. Cookery. Right. And, and art and all those things. So it made you a rounded person and allowed you to have Absolutely. conversations beyond just what the compass is on at that specific point in time. Right. Yeah. And I remember, I remember too, I mean, there was, there was a little bit of, you know, at least with some of the faculty, some of the teachers, there was an openness and a flexibility, especially in the art department. Cause I remember being right. in the art, I mean, you know, being in the, um, the drawing and painting semester that we had, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't my strength and I really couldn't find my way in it. And the teacher at the time, his name was Mr. Pickersgill. I don't know if you remember Mr. Pickersgill. Mm -hmm. And I, um, picture of him the other day, I saw, uh, I had, I had, I was showing some photographs to a friend of mine in class. And, um, you know, he was a big camera buff and he said, let me see those. And he said, well, do you have any interest in, in, in photography? And, um, and I said, yeah, actually. And he gave me his camera and he said, you know, instead of sitting here, you know, forcing yourself trying to draw, I want you to spend the, the, this double period. I want you to go around and take some pictures. And I did. And that turned into to me doing photography for my creative arts, you right. know, which right. which in turn led to me understanding storytelling in pictures. Right. right. Which is what you do as a director and which is what you do as an actor when you're working on camera, you know. Right. Um, right. So all from way back then, right? And, and which I am play play dabbling with with this show and and whatever else happens. So exactly. Yeah, I, I just listen to stuff that you all do. I listen to your what your videos, what you talk, and how you talk. And I listen to some local persons as to who and I trying to grab the nuggets here and there to see if what I'm saying is making sense or <laughs> right. right. But Earl Nightingale, you know, that's a guy from way back when, when my mom mm -hmm. was uh, generation. But he says that success is really nothing more than the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. This means that any person who knows what they are doing and where they are going is success. So, and I, I also add to that that uh, people often compare what they see of others' success and mm -hmm. then superimpose themselves in that space and say that if they had what that other person had, then they would be successful. But you know, and me being a baseball player and everything, my art coaches always told us that success starts from within. It is not what you get from outside. So what's your perspective on that? I think I, I mean, I agree. I think it's about, well, it's two things. You, you, you know, you can only, you, you can't compare your, your gifts to somebody else's gifts. And I think that's the thing when you're talking about like comparing, comparing your success to somebody else's success. Right. I mean, I think when I first started studying acting, I was thinking, oh, you know, um, I'm not as good as, I don't know, Al Pacino or, or Robert De Niro or Meryl mm -hmm. Streep. I'm not as good as those people. Well, but the thing good. is, I, I'm not those people, right. you know, mm -hmm. that me, me comparing myself to them, putting the, the bar that that place doesn't make sense because it doesn't take into account my specific skills and who I am as a person and what I bring to the artistic table, right? right. What's more important is having, I think what you said, the, the word is vision, right? right? Where do I want to go? What do I want to create and who do I want to be? And you put that out in front of you, looking mm -hmm. for where the camera is, yeah. yeah. Put that out in front of you, right? Um, you have to have vision, right? Vision, vision creates, clarity when you know what you want when i'm sorry when, when you have a vision a goal right? right and then that um and you know in your heart that that's what you want that's that's how you get there but you can't have it without a very specific goals being specific is is key to it is key to vision right and then mm -hmm. and then of course being open to how you get there because you may not control how you get there right you know you want to be at this place where um, where you're creating every day, where you're getting paid to create every day, you know, where you're working in whatever field it is. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. creative, right? It could be, you know, I, I want to I have a, a, a business where I own a fleet of, of, of fishing boats. 
right, um, okay. you know, but knowing that that's where you want to be, right? And that and and it's in your heart that you want to get there. It has to be connected to your passion. That's the word I'm looking for, right? right. Vision, where you're going, and passion, which passion. lives in you. And then letting the road open up and being open to where the road takes you. Not You can't control how you get there. Let go of that. Yeah, and, and then you... The you, the people that, that the good fella put in you will come out and then people want to be a part of you. That's that's the way I look at it. Yeah, and that's fantastic. Right. But in media now, media plays this role that where it, it bridges this gap between where this this wish list that people have. And when I say media, I'm I'm talking about all of the creatives, whether it's the whatever is the visual arts out there and, and so forth. Right? Um and so but and which it's easy to create an illusion that they have. And so the question I'd ask then is how easy is it to create that illusion to, to when you do and need it? Because you, you basically, well, let me ask you the question. When you okay. do your, your, um, your satires and the like, what is the ultimate goal for the audience? What, what is it that you're seeking for the audience to gain from that? That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, for me, when I'm when I'm doing like social satire, like the Obama video or the photographs of your junk video, where I'm where I'm where I'm satirizing what's going on in our culture, you know, what I want to do is 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 point out, you know, that the emperor has no clothes, right? I want I want to sort of I want to wake us up to see this is what's going on, and using humor as a way to open the door to seeing what's right in front of us, um, and. So it's, it's two things. It's me expressing how I am seeing the world, right? And finding the common thread that other people can relate to. So it's, it's a way of also connecting us, right? So people who are watching can see, oh yeah, that's, that is what's going on in the world. And I see it the same way as he does. We share that. So right. it's about both me being um, a creative person and um, taking stock of what's going on in the world and also doing my best to invite, to invite others to have the same vision. And I see your green screen, but I don't yeah, see- Yeah, I see my green screen come out. I don't know why why I went green. None. So, oh, I'm back again, but- Yeah, maybe some I am too. Anyway, and it's much bigger than yours now. Do so checks on that, but, but what, what, um, you gotta change this. What, what, what I would say is, as you mentioned that then, is that in creating that, Illusion, and what I'm referring to as illusion, is making that connection and shrinking that. So, like you said, that the person can be where you where you are, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, does creating this, uh, or does a creative have to be special to do this? Um, we already talked about about a couple of names you threw up down before, and being yourself versus having to duplicate somebody else. Those people are considered to be very special in in the in the um, yeah. space. I mean, so I think what does I, somebody have to be special to, to be a creative? I think, um, well, I think it all, it's all what we mean by the word special. I think, uh -huh. I think the specialness, right, is mm -hmm. what, what often, what, what those people have that I mentioned, that's just, you know, a couple of people. And what came to me, and it, and it came to me much later in life, I really didn't sort of, I really didn't sort of start my creative stride until I was almost 30, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and part of that is the specialness is really, really embracing your individuality, embracing who you are as different from everybody else and being confident in those differences and, and confident in your point of view. Because that's what it is about creativity, right? right. Um, the creatives are, they're being fully and authentically themselves or expressing their own point of view fully and authentically in whatever art form or media they're doing it in. And what's interesting is that by being more personal and authentic, it actually connects with a wider audience as opposed to trying to go, what does my audience wanna see? What do they wanna mm -hmm. see? So many people, let's give an example. So many people nowadays are on Twitter. I mean, on, on, on TikTok right okay and mm -hmm. and and um, instagram reels and they're trying to second guess what the audience wants right mm -hmm. one person gets gets a viral video and then everybody tries to figure out well what what can i do that's similar let me let me see let me try to project and then i'm going to create that and that is rarely successful right 
what happens, what actually is more successful is when people are authentically themselves, communicate what they want to and who they are authentically. And that actually creates a broader impact and connects to more people. So that's what I think special means. Okay, cool. Yeah. And that, that is good because that, that's from the other angle where people think that special, particularly behemoths, think that special mean that you have to have some great attributes and, and academics or some special training or be privileged or something like that, where special yeah. is from within. It is from within. The, I think uh, to, uh, to add another thing, I would think the, the specialness is, is that you have to have a passion for, for what you want to express. You have to have a passion for it. That's, yeah. That's that's something that um, that no one else can give you, and that's something that no amount of training can create or give you. Do you know what I mean? Right. There are many, many talented people who don't have a passion for for expressing it and a passion for pursuing their creativity or for pursuing their goals. Um, going back to it, it doesn't have to be a creative thing, right? It can it can right. be a business thing too. If you don't have mm -hmm. if you don't have a passion about it, then no amount of no amount of gifts which is I think what you're talking about, right? The gift of education, the gift of having money, a, a family that supports you so you don't have to worry about where the money's coming from. Right. You know, yeah. I, I've worked with many people who have, who have grown up with nothing and who have grown up very wealthy and they're both just as successful in this business. Right. 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 Cool. Okay, and so what would you say is the most important thing uh, for your success that has caused you to be successful? I know you said passion and the rest, of it, but besides those, let's take those off the table. And what else would somebody would we be a driver? Um, uh, persistence. Persistence. Persistence, and yes, sure. Um, I'm sure that's on the list. For it you. it yes. really is because um, uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a couple of things. One is one is persistence, um, because um the path has a lot of obstacles. Everybody's path has obstacles. Mm -hmm. um, once again, no matter what your goal is, I'm going to talk broadly, not just in terms of, of, of mm -hmm. creative arts, but, um, you know, business as well. Um, uh, there are a lot of obstacles that could come up and you, and you have to have persistence. This is where, this is once again, where passion comes into play because your passion lets you ride the obstacle, right? Let you figure out a way to overcome the obstacle. And, you know, as, um, and I'm, I'm not sure who I can attribute this quote to, but, you know, um, there's, I believe it's a, it's both a quote and a book called the obstacle is the way, mm -hmm. right. And, and, and okay. if you, you know, you're on the right path when there's, when there's obstacles, right. Right. <laughs> right? Um, so persistence to override those obstacles, you know, I, the first, the first, um, the first agent that I had in Washington DC tried to talk me out of being in show business. Okay. Um, and, uh, the first, you know, the first, uh, I have, I've, I've had, I had agents all through my career when I was working in film and TV, um, and theater tell me, mm, it's going to be hard for you to get a job. Oh, you're probably not going to work much. Um, you know, all these things, all, a lot of naysayers, a lot of haters, people would say now, they, they weren't particularly right. hating on me. They were just saying what they thought the, what the reality of the marketplace was. But I believe that there was a place for me. It right. took me a longer time to find it because because they were right. It was just a smaller, it was just a smaller niche, right? But it took me a while to find it, and that was persistence. Um, yeah. The other thing would be, besides persistence, is listening to what the listening to what feedback you're getting from people, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people will say you you might go well. You know, I really want to build boats. I really want to build boats. I really want to build boats. That's my passion, right? Mm -hmm. um, and someone, and but you're doing this thing on the side where you're like, you know, you're not building boats, but you're building cabinets, right? right. Let's say, for example, and and someone says, your cabinets are astonishing, man. I just, mm -hmm. I want you to. I know you're you're working on this boat. Will you come over to my house for the next five weekends and build and build my kitchen, right? right. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, and you do that. Right. And people come over to go over to that person's house and they call you up. And all of a sudden you're getting all these calls because people see the beauty and the exquisiteness and that particular thing that you do. And it's the same, it's the same kind of work, but it looks different on the outside, but it's the same kind of work on the inside. Um, and having the openness 
to see that and to understand that. In other words, to listen to what the world is saying, it sees you, sees, sees what you do well and wants it from you. That's really important too, right? Because you want to give that gift. Because right. Right? That's, your, that's your gift. Those are your gifts. And sometimes we, we get tracked into, well, you know, I, I want to be a Broadway star. I want to be a Broadway star, right? And the world is saying, oh my God, you're such a great soap opera actor. Mm-hmm. Can we have you in a soap opera, please? Right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Listening. Right. Listening. And so when we look at that now, um, when you left school, if I remember right. Yes. Oh, when we left school. You, well, first of all, you were a scholar, you know, you, I mean, you, you were a prankster like us too, but you, you still was the scholar. You was in the top tier. The I did, I, I did well in high school. I studied yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Don't, don't be modest. <laughs> um, so you, uh, I, I can't remember if, if it was you who wanted to, to do something with ships with, with my mom, those or somebody else, or, uh, but your parents wanted you to do something different. Yeah. And you, when you went off and it took a while before you found your way back into what you really wanted to do, which is what you're doing now. Um, yeah, it took a, stuff. it took, it was a long time. It was a good, it was a good, you know, five, a 10 years almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I went and got a, you know, I got a regular job. Uh, I mean, yeah. I went, I went to college, I studied history and economics and I went and worked for a, a international trade law firm doing economic analysis of all things. And I did that for, I did it full time for six years. You were not happy doing that. No, I was, you know what? I was happy doing it, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't fulfilling in the same way. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really, I'm really good at, at at figuring out a way to enjoy wherever I'm at. And that, that was, that was my struggle because, because, it was too easy for me to forget what my vision was because I can make right. myself comfortable anywhere, right? right. Um, but over over the years, I was like, mm, I just I, I want to yeah, be on. I want to be driving on the stage. where you wanted to go, right? Yeah, that's I want to be on the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Uh, but can I tell you that whole once again so that whole experience of working in a corporate environment? When I started working on TV, mm-hmm. especially, I booked those jobs easily all the time doctor, lawyer, accountant, all those things, because I lived in that world and I knew how to wear those clothes and be comfortable and, and, you know, and and most actors in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of my, a lot of my competition, they could act, but once they had to put on a suit and everything, they, they sort of got trapped in it. And I was like, Oh, I I know what this is. This is just, these are just clothes. Right. Right. Yeah. And so when we look at that, then you have um, your specific gifts. Um, what would they be? What, if somebody was to say, they look at you and say, what would your specific gifts be? So people would know for the type of work you do, what might be some of the things. If they have those same gifts, what you do sure. might be something that might want to explore. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, uh, my voice, which I inherited. So we have to thank mm-hmm. Mr. Ronnie Butler for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, also the the comfort of another gift would be my comfort on being on stage and in front of people speaking in front of people um, came easily and comfortably. That wasn't something that I had to get over, you know, being, being in the center and, and being in the spotlight was not something that I had to become comfortable with, um, uh, which as a stage actor is uh, something that you need. Um, and my, my love of storytelling, mm-hmm. um, uh, because ultimately in all the performing arts, under, being able to understand story and mm-hmm. how you fit into the story um, is really important. That's something that you can learn. That's not something you have to be born with. That's something that you can learn. But that's all right. We have plenty of people who, who have that gift. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Time already, yeah, so. yeah. It's, oh, it's no. interesting. No matter, no, no matter how crazy the world gets or how simple the world gets, mm-hmm. um, we all love hearing stories everything we right. do is about stories you know all the all the stuff the TikTok, all the stuff on on all the stuff on instagram reels they're small but it's all about telling stories right. all the movies all the tv all the songs it's all storytelling 
Yeah. Well, our stories got us out, at least got me out of plenty of trouble. Um, yeah. So, uh, how did you go about um, tuning your skills for for this? You, you talked about what you were gifted with when you were yeah. Planned, so I I skills associated with it. Yeah. yeah so um so those gifts are 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 what we call raw materials, and okay. so then I went to train. Right. I wanted to train them. So um, actually, when I was in when I was living at home, uh, when we were in high school, I actually took um, a, a, a workshop one summer at the Dundas okay. um, and, uh, you know, studied, studied, um, studied acting, studied with studied with uh, Philip Burroughs, who had studied at the American Academy of the Dramatic Arts in New York, you know, and he, he led a summer workshop where we learned um, you know, some of the elements of method acting. And that was the be that was the beginning of my foundation. Singing right. with the choir at QC. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when I when I eventually ended up in, in New York, most of what I did in New York was musical theater where I was singing. Right. You know, and to do that, it's not like singing, it's not like singing with a band, um, right. you know, alone in a microphone. You've got to learn, you've got to learn music and you've got to you've got to learn parts. And uh, that began at QC you know, in music theory class and in singing with choir. But right. I'm sorry, what, so when I, when, I, when I decided to jump into it in, when I was living in DC, I started studying acting with, um, privately with a woman who taught at Howard. Mm -hmm. And um, she was my acting coach. And, um, and that's when I started getting jobs and working and, and working. I also studied movement and I also studied dance because those things, they do a lot of those things in musicals, you know? And then when I moved to New York, I before the three summers before I moved to New York, I spent three summers studying with a theater company in New England, where all I did was every day intensively for the entire summer was speech and diction, voice, movement, scene work, you know, studying plays, doing scenes, performing, you know, basically getting a, a second education, but completely in the creative arts. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that's how I did that. And then experience. There's stuff that you just don't learn until you're in front of a camera or on a stage. And it's just, you just mm. don't learn it till then. Right. And so you talk about things that drive you in terms of passion and being authentic and the rest of those things and, and what you're doing now and finding your niche. I call all of that, uh, your purpose in mm -hmm. life. And so how, how, um, how did you know, what was your purpose? Uh, how would when, when you're doing these things? To, for me, I think it's when you feel like you're at peace or you're happy or you're mellow or whatever about it. It's not putting you in a state of flux and turmoil and everything. Then those, okay. are, those are things that is a part of your purpose. What, what's your um, view on, on that and um, so forth? I would say when you're living, when you're, when you're living your, when you're, when you're living your purpose, mm -hmm. For me, it's another way of saying that is that you, you find your lane, you know, and, and, and the obstacles that I talked about earlier just sort of fall by the wayside. It's, it's, it, it's some, it becomes easy. Not the work is necessarily easy, but all the stuff that used to get in the way just falls by the wayside and stuff just mm -hmm. comes to you because you're right, you're, you're in the center of where you're supposed to be. It's like a, well, not, no one's going to understand that except people of my age. I'm just going to use a metaphor of a record needle on a record and finding the groove in a record. Um, <laughs> but they're not people, people, uh, younger people won't know that reference. But, um, but the idea of finding your groove when you, when you're in the groove, right. It's, mm -hmm. it's like being in the eye of the storm. It's quiet and it just happens. It yeah. simply happens. And that's how you know you're in your spot. Yeah. That's why I say it, it's peace. When yeah. You're in your peace. I would say the same thing. Yeah. So, Madam Producer, uh, could you drop that first um, video on the screen for our audience so that we can see some of this talented gentleman in front of me? You know, man, who knows? All them years back, we'd be talking about. I know. I would. I didn't. Big screens and all kind of stuff. You know, it's the one right next to me. It should be next to me or next to you. I'm. Uh, I'm curious as to what clip you're going to show. I have no idea. Bond. It's near your place, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this didn't kill him, but I'd sure like to know what it is. It started eating the flesh, which is accelerating the putrefaction process. Coach Owens is urging the parents not to let you people talk to our kids. But Harold's no saint. And if he did something, I want to know about it.
Uh, looking at his cranial MRI, it's clean. No tumors, no aneurysms, EEG normal. Did you test him for meningitis? I did a lumbar puncture and it came back negative. I don't see a physiological reason for his symptoms. Pretty guy, just like you. You believe in Jesus as your personal savior? Excuse me, mm, You better believe. Because just as real as that Jesus is, you better believe the devil just as real. I am. You ain't gotta be afraid. Let me turn on the lights in here. Bill Gates parks his helicopter on the roof of this building when he visits the city. Bono is a regular at the sushi bar, and I've never heard of you or the McMillans. My money is as good as anybody's. It's not, actually. You're a first-time dealer with second-rate clients. I wish you'd been more forthcoming when you called. I wouldn't have wasted your time. Don't tell me this is a virus or evolution or whatever. This is deliberate intervention. I mean, all of us have been changed by design. But how? Who could do this? Well, who's got the technology? Simple answer. No one on this earth. Awesome, 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 awesome. <laughs> no, I that's just that's just that's just the touch of it. That's the yeah, that's right. a little that's a little clip, a little taste. Mm -hmm. Wow. But you saw what I was saying. You see how many doctors there were in that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the the first two or three years I worked in TV, it was all doctors. In fact, my friends started calling me Dr. Ron. But that's just oh. because I was used to, you know, saying a lot of big words because of the right, job right. I had before then. Yeah, see, see, people, I tell you, he was the top of the class, you know, them big words. You never hear me <laughs> with my big words. <laughs> so I, some, some other clips you have, you have some really big words. I was like, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah so far. So tell us, before we take this, um, go to the break, what, what, what a day would look like in the life of um, Ronnie Butler Jr.? You mean currently or, or in yeah. the day if of those you, clips? You, when you do work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Currently. Yeah. Um, well, right now... Or, or, or during those periods, whichever one is most exciting for people to get inspired. inspired. Yeah, well, why not both quickly? So, okay. you know, in the day when I was doing mostly television, um, most of every day was running around auditioning, you know, mm -hmm. or preparing for an audition. You know, so for, for most TV, for most of those TV jobs, except for the big ones, uh, a, a job where you would get work for a day or a couple of days or a week, you know, you would get us, you would get the script or the audition sides, they're called. You get the audition sides if you were lucky the day before, if you were lucky two days before, right? If you were really lucky, you get them on a Friday and your audition was Monday. But lots of times you'd get them on like a Thursday and your audition was Friday, you know? And so whatever you're doing, you, everything comes to a halt so you can spend time preparing for the audition. And then the day of the audition, you know, you, you run around, you do your errands or whatever, but then you drive to the studio, you know, you have to get a pass, you go on the lot, you wait in a room, you sign a thing, you walk in the door, you audition. You, normally there's two or three auditions, sometimes they're on the same day. So you leave and then 20 minutes later, your agent calls and says, okay, you've got a call back. You're gonna go back and you, the first, the first audition is for the casting director. The next set of auditions is for the producers. You go back, there's eight people in the room and you do the same thing you did before, but you do it live in front of those eight people and then they decide. And that was a typical day. You'd do that maybe, if you were lucky, you'd do that a couple times a week because you'd have to do it a couple times a week to get at least one job, right? right. If you're lucky. Um, today, my days are mostly, I, I, I am 100% voiceover and audiobook narration. I have my own vocal booth here in the house. And my day is, um, you know, I get up and I go to the gym and I maybe run whatever errands, but I go in that booth and I record for anywhere from three to six hours. And that's my day. Cool. Simple as that. All right. Well, maybe we'll see the booth after the break. Um, sure. I'll give you a tour of the booth. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, you're listening to Something to Think About with Dale Happy Nose, and we're here with Ronnie Butler Jr., who's better known as Ron Butler in his space as we go forward. And we here yeah, talking about embracing your purpose so that you can be successful, you know, and I think that's very key and important. So Madam Producer, we'll be right back.
Sammy's Chicken. There's nothing like it. Behind every scoop, lick, and savor is a smile and memory being made or reminisced. Whether you're at work, out with family on a Sunday, or have friends visiting, Flavor will meet expectations in our 32-ounce container for only $10 if you're having a special event as well. Exotic flavors ranging from sour soft to Guinness is definitely worthwhile. President, the numbers say there's a disconnect between the reality of what you've accomplished and the public's perception. The people think you're failing to be the model of modern reform and change that they were promised. Really? Mm -hmm. I disagree. I am the very model of a modern U.S. president, a liberal one at first, but now it seems I have a centrist bent, and though my popularity is waned, I am not hesitant to say I've done quite well so far, although I lacked experience. We pull the country back from cataclysmic economic woes. We're fighting in Afghanistan and focused on our deadly foes. In short, I'm firm about my goals and vow that I shall stick to them. And though I'm black, Joe Biden says I'm clean and quite articulate. And though he's black, Joe Biden says he's clean and quite articulate. And though he's black, Joe Biden says he's clean and quite articulate. And though he's black, Joe Biden says he's very clean and quite articulate. In spite of special interest, I have pushed through major health reform. The country was in uproar. Who'd have thought it caused a major storm? By fighting to give basic health care to each citizen for free, I inadvertently gave rise and reason to the Tea Party. The issue is divisive. I have made a lot of enemies. A congressman lost his control and even said you lie to me. But listen, because the odds are 10 to 1, it is a certain bet. The only time I lie is when I say I don't smoke cigarettes. The only time he lies is when he says he's with the cigarettes. The only time he lies is when he says he's with the cigarettes. The job is stressful, so get off his back. He needs a tiny cigarette. I'm too ambitious. Critics say my expectations are too grand. But if we cannot rise to this occasion, I think no one can. It's tough not pleasing everyone. I'm just a man. I do my job. If Sarah Palin shoots her mouth off one more time, so help me God. The corporate greed, the BP spill, and rising unemployment costs. Extremist right fanatics, immigration, where to put a mosque. And in between, I kiss Michelle and hang out with my daughters too. I even walk the dog sometimes and clean up stinky doggy poo. The hardest thing about his job is cleaning up his doggy. He needs the free world and he's also cleaning up his doggy. He's got the best report of all and yet he's from mixing in doggy poo. I hearken unto Lincoln and I still believe in compromise. I just require sanity and reason from the other side. So take my word and don't believe a single thing Fox News has said. I am the very model of a modern U.S. president. So take his word and don't believe a single thing Fox News has said. He is the very model of a modern U.S. president. Wow. Awesome, 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 awesome stuff, man. Um, can I just can, can I can I just mention something we were talking about earlier to connect it mm -hmm. to that to that sure. video thing, which is remember I said you have to have sort of a, a vision for where you want to go, but you have to let go of the how you're going to get there, right? right? And listen to listen to the messages that you're getting. So, a lot of people, if they were give, asked, given a lot of actors in LA, if offered the opportunity to um, to do a look-alike, you know, to do right. a, a look-alike work would turn their nose up at it. Would be like, no, that's not acting. That's not what I want to do, right? That's not going to help me with my career. Um, but I had, you know, I had, um, I literally was, I, what was, I was in a grocery store 
Oh no, no, no. I was in um I was in a, a casting director workshop and two actresses mm -hmm. turned around to me and said, Has anybody ever told you you look like you favor Barack Obama? And I said, right. Who? <laughs> <laughs> this was a year before he was elected. Right. And they said, You should send your picture to Jimmy Kimmel, to the casting people at Jimmy Kimmel, and tell them people tell you you look like Obama. Cause I bet they'll be doing sketches, you know, little like little funny sketches. Right. And so I told my manager, she did it. And a month later, I did a sketch on Jimmy Kimmel. I met a woman who was a Hillary Clinton impersonator. She invited me to a, a, an, a, a lookalike con convention. I went and I started doing that work. And mm -hmm. once again, a lot of people have said, mm, it's not acting. And I was like, well, it's acting if I make it acting, if I approach it that way. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, eight years later, not eight years later, four years later, I made that video and that got me introduced to Brent Miller. And it also went viral on every single news program, every single thing. It changed my life and changed my career. And it's because I was willing to let go of this idea that it can only happen in a certain way, that the road right. is only right. one way. Right. 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 So Ralph Cole and um, I thought somebody else I saw pop up there was given, um, giving you love for. The, uh, Thank you. It's, oh, I see Ralph Cole and Devon. Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ken Blanchard says that profit is the applause you get for taking care of your customers. Well, I would always say that this imitation, imitating that you did of President Obama and not just this piece, but some other pieces that I've seen, um, you, you uh, really get an applause um, from your audience because you took care of your audience, you, you made a connection as to what we were talking about earlier Yeah, with them. I think a lot of people, and you see from, from here on the show, and actually this is a classmate of ours too. She changed her name on me. But, you know, I, and that's, that's Yvette Rally. Um, how do you pronounce that? Sherbert? Sure. Yeah. Hello, Yvette. How you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Yes. Um, QC in the house. Hey, yes, Yvette. Much so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I could tell you some stories about Yvette too, but I <laughs> Yeah, we all had a lot of fun in school. Obama reference to walking the dog. Yes, yes, that, that, that stood out with me too, um, Ralph. When, he, when I saw the video for the first time, I was like, yeah, that's a real president. Cool. So, um, and how gratifying is it in receiving uh, applause for your work? Mm. I mean, it, it, it feels great. Uh, it feels wonderful. It's short lived though. You know, applause is like, is, is it's, there's an endorphin rush. It's like, you know, why people look for, look on their Instagram to see a like. And every time they see another like, you get that little, you know, you get that little, I'm sorry, not endorphin, dopamine hit, right? You yeah. get that little hit, yeah, know you know? And yeah. applause is like that, but it, it goes away. It goes away quickly, right? What is, what is really wonderful and meaningful for me um, is I'll have people reach out. Gosh, I had a, I got an email from I, I worked with a guy on an audio book. Um, he had a small part. It was something for Audible. It's more like a radio drama, right? It was a story with many people in it. And two months later, like last week, he emailed me and he said, you know, I he goes, I just watched ordinary. Uh, I just watched everyday people on HBO. And he said, and your work was so wonderful. And that scene that you did with the guy where you told him, blah, blah, blah. He goes, it was such wonderful work. And I just want to thank you for that work and, and acknowledge that, th that kind of thing. Or when somebody, or when somebody gets on social media and says, I just listened to this book and you broke my heart and put it back together again, that stays with me because that, that, that means that, I've impacted you beyond just a hand clap. You know, it's like you, you, I, I felt like I did my job. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to move you enough to where you changed your life or you changed the way you thought about something or you opened your mind up to something or you felt, you felt less alone. Right. Um, and okay. that is incredibly gratifying. Yeah. And I think that's what Ken Blanchard is talking about, stuff like that um, as a whole. Because I mean, if you read his books and stuff that, he might say something, but it, it means a lot more than what he's actually saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the picture. So now you have all of these awards. 
that people yes. um, put on your shelf. Yes. And so forth. And I know you, you uh, saw the models and when you're back in school, and I don't know about now, but, uh, but the, tell us about those though, the, the, the different awards you have, the I, um, IFP, the so vast and, um, sure. So the, 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 the IFP award, which is a, is an independent film, independent film award. That was for the movie I just mentioned everyday people, which is it's old. We shot that in 2004. Okay. So I was working at, I was working at Disneyland at the time. Um, like another thing, a lot of people would have said, you know, you're a working actor, don't go work in a theme park, you know, but working at Disneyland was allowed me to transition to being in LA. And, um, and that changed, again, changed my entire career. If I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have taken that job in Disneyland, I probably never would have moved to LA and I would never, never have been on true Jackson. And those right. things changed my life. Right. right. Um, so uh, that's the IFP was for the entire cast. It was because it was a very um, a collaborative film, an ensemble cast. Um, in my in my work as a as a narrator, um, there are two uh, major awards. There are the earphone awards, which happen okay. periodically, um, and then there are the Audis, which are sort of which would have been called like the Oscars of of okay. our our world. Um, I have I have been fortunate enough to win to have about I don't know seventeen or eighteen earphone awards. Um, many of those were books by myself, some with myself and one other person, some with an ensemble cast. Um, and I've also been nominated for so I've lost count. I think I'm nominated for eight eight or twelve Audis. Once again, a combination of some by myself with other people and ensemble cast. Um, so I, I, I feel, I feel once again, uh, you know, it's lucky, but it's a, it's an affirmation that I'm in the right place and that I'm doing the right kind of work because, because people are responding to it. And it means that right. I'm, you know, fulfilling my purpose in the, uh, as a, as a storyteller and a performer. All right. So folks out there, if you have any questions or comments, then do sure do drop them in the and in the, in the, uh, in the chat, and then we'll endeavor to answer them. Please, the, the good president will. Uh, <laughs> I think what well, I think what um, Ralph was referring to when Obama referred to the dog walking is that people often ask me if um, if uh, well, first of all, I've never met him, but people always ask me, "Did you ever get to meet him?" I did not get to meet him. Um, and they asked me, do you think he ever saw the video? And I say, I believe he did. And here's how I know, here's how I know, or think I know that he did. Because I, as I mentioned to you, I still worked for, I still worked in, um, I worked in DC. And when the video came out, uh, a friend of mine, I called people all over. I was pushing the video, you know, and I called one of my former colleagues in the law office in DC. And he said, oh, you know what? I have, I have a friend who's working, who's on Obama's staff. I'm going to send him the link. You know, I'm going to send it to him this morning. And then he called me back and he said, I sent it to him and he loved it. He says he's going to, he's going to try to get Obama to look at it. Well, the following day, Obama was in Massachusetts for something and he was supposed to stay for dinner, but he couldn't. And he was leaving. And at the press conference, they said, why are you leaving? And he said, oh, I have to go home and scoop up the poop. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we all were like, there's no reason he would say that unless he had seen yeah, the video, yeah. right? So... Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, your colleagues, your producer is very kindly saying where people can follow me on social media. I'm on, on Twitter. I'm Ronnie Butler, Jr. for Ronnie Butler, Jr. On Instagram. I'm Ronnie Butler on TikTok. I'm Ronnie Butler, Jr. Yeah. I'm, I'm easy to find. Cool. All of those. So what works for you, um, most, or what works are you most pleased with? You mean in terms of my accomplishments? Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, the, the, what you? I mean, you. you a lot yeah. Of people in the Bahamas don't know what you did, but I mean, it's. Yeah, it's, I think. Um, I think from each sort of each stage of my career, there's different things that I'm most proud of. So, uh, when I was in when I was living in New York, I was I was fortunate enough to do the re a revival of a a, a Sondheim uh, Stephen Sondheim musical called Merrily We Roll Along. Okay. And I worked with some of the, I worked with some 
wonderfully talented people, all of whom have become huge sort of Broadway stars um, mm -hmm. um, at this point. And that we were all sort of young and coming up together. I was very proud of to, to even make it to be, to work with those people um, mm -hmm. when, you know, they all had been mus doing musicals and theater their whole lives. And I came to it such so late in life. So I'm very proud that I managed to, to get in with them and hold my own. Um, right. I'm really proud of the work I got to do. Actually, I just mentioned at Disneyland when I was doing Aladdin when it first started, because I started with a small part and I ended up understudying three of the main characters. And at one point I was the only genie and I was doing the genie, you know, three times a day, six days a week. And that opened up the whole world of improv. And I, and I realized that I had, the, I had this ability to think on my feet and be funny on my feet and also write jokes and, and you know, do them on the spur of the moment. So I was really proud of that. Um, then on TV, my work on True Jackson, because that was, you know, no one had ever hired me to be funny before. And I grew up, I don't know if you remember, but I grew up in school trying to crack mm -hmm. people up all the time. But my humor was not a slapstick, it was more of a smart funny. And that yeah. show let me do that. And they, once again, they saw how I was funny and they started writing it for me, right? And okay. they saw yeah. the way that I was. So I'm very proud of that work. And then, now as a narrator, gosh, you know, there's two or three books a year where where I just am, I, I can't believe that I actually did them myself. Like I, I, I stand back and I go, I don't remember doing it, but I'm so glad I did because people love it so much and, and um, I feel really lucky to be doing that work. Cool, bless, bless, bless is the word. We don't yeah, blessed is the word. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I believe uh, what I refer to your style of, of, of work or of, is what I call like expressionism. Mm. Um, and I, I say it's, 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 it's gifted around your voice, uh, but it's potentiated by dramatics. Mm. Uh, I think and your, your expressions on your face and antics of movements and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's what makes people want to draw closer and closer to get to know more about your work. That's mm. me. Um, I call that your butter, right? Like that. Oh, okay. You know, I like that. You can keep it going. But in school, you always uh, seem to be shy about singing, even though you sang uh, in the choir, but outside of that, you didn't seem like you wanted to do like how the band, you know, because your dad was the big entertainer and stuff. You didn't want to do that type of, of work. So how did you f um, find the significance of unleashing yourself? Um, or the advantages that you had, these skills, these gifts and stuff like that. You know, uh, I, I, you're right about that. And, and, and that's probably the, 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 the deep dive and the psychology of that is probably longer than we have time for now in terms of why I, did, why I wasn't singing then and there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I sang with him once or twice on stage. But what happened was when I moved to New York mm -hmm. and I got an agent, uh, well, or I met with an agent. The first thing my agent said was, can you sing? And I was like, well, yeah, I can sing. I mean, I, I knew that I had, I just assumed I had a good voice. Like, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I thought I, I, you know, I, I was like, yeah, you know, I just said, yes, of course I can sing. Yeah, um, never say no. <laughs> and exactly. And then I literally left and went and like, well, call three friends and said, okay, my gosh, I need a singing coach because this agent wants me to bring something into his office next week and sing in his office. Right. And I had to find music and, did, you know, it was like, it was a rush. Um, but as it turns out, um, that's what opened up the world of singing right. um, was uh, that agent saying, you know, I'm going to be able to get you a lot more work if you can sing that if you can't, in fact, mm -hmm. I can get you a lot more work. And that's what opened that door up and, and, um, you know, I ran, and like I said, I ran through it. Right. Yeah. So Devon, um, is saying, uh, what was the most difficult decision you had to make in your career, um, that still resonates with you today? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> the most difficult, but that resonates with me today. Um, I mean, the first thing that jumps out, uh, was, um, leaving you know in, in this in this uh in this career you often work you, you work with agents right. right and one of the most difficult things what for me was understanding when my relationship 
with a particular agent was no longer fruitful for either of us and leaving it and moving on was very, very difficult for me. And I think, um, and, and actually in, in the case of, you know, my first two agents, I stayed in those relationships too long. I stayed right. in them past their due dates and um, those, then it stopped being effective for me. And I think the way it resonates today is that I think my, my career might've been different. Um, it might've been more fruitful if I had the wherewithal to know that it was time to move on from them. Um, that's yeah. something that I, it took me a, a long time to learn um, and to understand and to develop the bravery for. Because there's so much of there's so much in, in entertainment business where you are at the whim of other people. It feels like you're at the whim of other people. And to have the to have the wherewithal to go, no, I don't like this, I don't want this, you know, and this isn't enough for me. And to know that you can say no and walk away and there still will be another opportunity behind it. Right. It took me a long time to get to that place. And I think people are much more successful when they when they get to that place earlier or when they start at that place. That, that is that is very much true. Um, I find that to be the case also. But I also find that uh, if you if you reach a point quicker than you're supposed to reach, then you never learn from the mistakes or the challenges that you got as a result of it, and then you're going to repeat it. Uh, yeah, or the, that's the true too. It's going to be yeah. repeated, and so that extends uh, the lay of your, uh, your yeah. success or finding your, your purpose also in, in the light. And so cool. So, um, do, 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 let me fast forward to that. What do you say, uh, to young creatives in charting their course? What would you say to them? I would reiterate a couple of things we've already said. I would okay. say, um, be true to yourself. Don't, don't try to copy what you think um, is popular or what you think people want to hear, mm -hmm. but say what you want to say. Be willing to have your own point of view and your own idea about your own creativity. Right. I would say um, be persistent. Um, trust that if you, you know, trust that you will find, trust that your purpose will come from being persistent and that your purpose isn't measured by how many people necessarily respond or how many likes you get or how many claps you get. But as you said, Happy, um, it, it, is, it is measured by the sense of fulfillment and the sense of mm -hmm. peace that you have around you as you pursue what you're going to do. And don't hesitate to get some skills if you feel like they will help you be better at what you do. And, and, and ask, do not be afraid to ask. People like me, people like you, people who have already gone through it, ask for help. We all got help. I got help. Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody gets help in terms of whether it's just information or mm -hmm. pointing in the right direction. You know, um, there is a community and uh, not being too proud to ask for help and, um, and then, you know, doing the work once you get the help. Yeah. And one thing you mentioned also earlier, which is what I always found to be key is the art of listening, right? Because I mean, you could do all of that. And if you're not listening, it's like somebody get in the room and they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, but they're not listening to what other people are saying, but then they want to know why they're not elevating themselves. And mm -hmm. somebody on the outside looking at you could see things that you don't see. And if you listen, that don't say you must accept everything because you could throw away whatever, but you can't throw away if you inherit in the first place, right? Using That's a really good point. You know, and they and and so many so many uh, perf acting coaches will say a big part of a, a big part of great acting is great listening, okay. really being present and hearing what's hearing what's being said. You know, so that you're here in the present moment, not ahead of yourself. You know, not trying to think of what you're going to say next, but really taking in what's going on right now, right? Really hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I took that little one um, communications 101 or 102 or 105 or whatever number it was that we did when I was in nomads land where my mom was spending all the money and trying to figure <laughs> what I was doing in school. Uh -huh. but, uh, you know, they always taught us that, you know, you have to listen to what is said, what is not said, and the body mm. language. And my mom always stressed that over and over and over and so forth. And so let's listen 
to another one of your pieces. And oh, so okay. If we get what is said, what's not said, and the body language in there, Madam Producer, you and hit the second one there. That should be the comic one. Oh, I'm graphics of your junk will be publicized. The photographs of your junk. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Okay. Don't worry oh, you want to do the, the comedy reel? The Is that what you're doing? Okay. Yeah. Time's up. Right. Time. Sir, I know. The time is. I know it is. Girls, girls, girls. What's all this commotion? I do not support commotion. Rosie stole my secret sight gift. <laughs> That's insane. Why would I do that? Open your locker. This is already more time than I wanted to spend on students today. I broke Mr. Madigan's horse statue. What? When? Four years ago. Then again, two years ago. And twice last month. And six times yesterday. I keep replacing them. Want one? Okay, let's just cut to the chase. I've gone through everything, and your problem isn't just this ludicrous organizational system. Your problem is income. Meaning? You need some. Hey. So, what are you in for? Uh, I beat my boss senseless with a foam scepter. I'd prefer you sat over there. Sure. <laughs> Dance party. That was so much fun. We watch. I know. Cool. I think we must have done 10 or 15 takes of that dance party thing just because the producers like watching me do that silly dancing so much. We did it over and over and over again. <laughs> but you had another one on, I think it was on LinkedIn the other day that I thought was absolutely hilarious. I think it, it, you went backwards and then you went to the wall. Or, or, I can't remember was it? Way, but, was it LinkedIn? It, was it? Was it? And was it from True Jackson? What was it? it might oh no, no, no! That was a TikTok. That was just was a, TikTok. a TikTok. Yeah, yeah. That was recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's just me. You, you know, uh, one of the one of the great things about um, one of the things uh, that I use TikTok for and and mm -hmm. these other social medias for is it because even though I'm in the even in the booth. Every time I get an idea, a small, kooky, funny, or what I think is funny or creative idea that's small, mm -hmm. I just knock it out and throw it up there. And it, it gives me joy and it gives other people yeah. joy. And it's just, you know, part of being creative for me, the fulfillment is I need to be making something every day. I need to create right. something every day. Right. And mm -hmm. going from having the idea to then creating it physically and manifesting it outside of myself gives me incredible right. fulfillment. So. Awesome. So great people don't sit still. So what's <laughs> next for Ronnie Butler Jr.? Uh, are you okay. going to do a, a ballot with your, your dad? You know how they, the, the, oh my the gosh. And, uh, and, you know, and, um, there's so Martin many, Cole there's, did their thing. yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. I do have, I have a, a uh, I have a lot of footage that I taped of him. Um, I didn't tape it actually, um, Charles Allen Smith did, you know, Charlie Bahamas. Um, uh, uh, and we taped a lot of interviews with a lot of people who knew him and, uh, and some footage of him and him and I, um, and trying to figure out what, what I want to do with that. Right. Um, even though it's been a few years since he passed, it still, it still feels very close. And um, I'm I'm just not ready to dive into that yeah. stuff yet. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the other, but the other stuff that I'm doing, you know, I'm in this world of narration, and I've actually been asked to do some writing. Um, and so instead, of, as opposed to just reading the stories, actually writing the stories and and owning it, um, right. and then narrating my own writing is the next thing I'm going to do in terms of in terms of creativity. So let me let me let me throw this out here right now. Um, Okay. Uh, you could you could let me be your agent for it, but <laughs> you can write the stories of the Bahamas so that the young children inside um, primary school and so forth can learn about our uh, real history 
with the with your um character behind it. I think they will listen to it and, and grasp it versus somebody who's been to Harvard or Princeton or something speaking in proper English. Okay, so are now are you willing are you willing to be a a, 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 a like a, a managing producer of this project or somehow well, shepherd? I know it? somebody who can manage and produce it. Uh, I will be the one in the front going beating down the walls to to get it in front yeah, of people. People listen to it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Cool. That would be awesome. I think I think we need more of our own people doing stuff in in that space. Yeah. Uh, and so forth. And so is there anybody, is there anybody, and I don't know this, and this is, this is where I'm, you know, my bad, but is there anybody, um, I know that I, that I read something, um, I did some audio narration for, uh, for a children, I would say middle grade, like young, young children's book, um, okay. uh, uh, within the last couple of years, but is, are there, are there many Bahamians writing, writing stuff for children? Um, one time ago, before COVID and everything, I heard that there were some persons doing it, but they, the artists in the Bahamas seem to have been holding back on releasing content mm -hmm. um, for a number of various reasons. Um, some of it has been unscrupulous activity. Some of it has been nobody really is paying attention to it. So they feel why they're gonna do it blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. So you even had people, one, rent and pick up and rent to Cuba and doing this stuff down there. Another one is in somewhere in the States that I know about, um, uh, Alabama or someplace up in there. Okay. And, you know, so it, I don't know. I mean, that's something I could explore for and find out more about um, what's happening, why. But it seems like it's now becoming more, particularly around election time, people were starting to write up. I'm not sure if that's going to continue. The, you know, there was the scripts and stuff for, for the different candidates and some of their characters and some of their character flaws. You know, Spyro and the rest of those used to write all kinds of stories about Yeah, and yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie, um, Ronnie, Ronnie, what's his name? Not Ronnie Butler, um, Eddie Minnis. Yes. Well, your dad too. I mean, your yeah, dad yeah, 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 yeah. It was social satire in music and song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, there's a lot of people out there. My son who was on the while ago who asked that question, he, he wants to be a, a, a DJ. Wait a minute. That was your son? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, he didn't have the, he doesn't put his picture up on, I don't know why, but then he didn't. But anyway, yeah, he wants to be a, a, a special DJ. He doesn't want to be a, what what we see all the time. But I don't know how to explain it, but he wants to have his own character behind okay. it. Okay. Bring it something different to the table. So he he's just preparing himself in the background so that he could open up someday. We call him DJ Legend two four two, I think. Something like that. Cool. So Madam awesome. Producer, you wanna put up that one that we started to run the clip on, which the um the photo and photos in the junk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll look at the camera. I'm being told to look at the camera. Oh, you want me, you want me to find it? It should be. This yeah. is, um, this is about sort of the unholy alliance between social media and, you know. <laughs> The photographs of your junk will be publicized. The photographs of your junk will be publicized. Oh, no. And you wonder why little Susie is no longer traumatized by sites that are not sanitized. She too has been anesthetized by all the junk that's publicized. The revolution has been photoshopped to look gentler than it is. It is costing you five dollars a gallon. It has been refuted, muted, and diluted like the news of your home's foreclosure. It has been appropriated, confiscated, and amalgamated. Much like your privacy, it has been hacked by the social network, connecting you and putting you to sleep. And all the little birds sing. Tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. All right, all right, all right. Now, folks, that's only a clip. That's and deep. The whole, uh, thing, right. Um, we, we, we can't play the whole thing because we'll be here for another 
half an hour to hour just talking about yeah all is on the content of that because there's a lot in that uh i think it's about three or five minutes or something like that something yeah it's about it's about it's just under i think it's between three and four around four minutes yeah yeah so we, all of these videos we're gonna put in the in the chat um so everybody oh, can thank you. click on the link um and get to view them and that particular one you 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 listen to at your own uh, approval. I, yeah. I can't put that in front of you to listen to. You, you have to choose. That one, to that one, um, that is, um, that was one that, um, that Norman Lear and Brent Miller executive produced. And when I say executive produced, I mean, they wrote the check for it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and there was a, there was a, a, a famous poet, uh, they, a, a famous black poet, who's often called the proto rapper, like the first rapper. And his name was Gil Scott Heron. And he, and he, and he had a, he had a piece called the revolution will not be televised. And what it was about was how, mm -hmm. you know, entertainment, um, you know, speaking metaphorically that entertainment and distraction entertainment and, and things in the entertainment world. Um, and, you know, uh, and alcohol and just everything that involves an entertainment and distraction was distracting particularly black people from understanding how they were being downtrodden and kept under right and that um and it was meant to put them to sleep you know metaphorically right and it was his it, his birthday happened that um that one year that i wrote that and it was his birthday and i was thinking a lot about that piece and then directly after that we had the summer where there were all these scandals that were going wild on on social media, you know, um, uh, Tiger Woods and Arnold Schwarzenegger and that one boxer, and there was just like scandal after scandal after scandal, and it's all anybody cared about was scandal. And meanwhile, like I said, people were losing their homes. Right. Um, you know, the the price of gas was five dollars. Now it's six dollars, right? Um, but all of that was. Um, all of that was happening and people were so busy paying attention to scandal that they weren't, they weren't seeing how um, their rights were being stripped away from stripped them. Away. And uh, because they were paying attention to the wrong thing, right? And that's what that piece is about, was about waking us up, you know, and not letting our engagement with social media and sort of our love of scandal and the, and the way that, you know, you get one thing and everybody runs and everybody gets mad about it for a, a week and then it's on to the next thing. Meanwhile, there are these things that have been going on forever that are slowly undercutting your rights and your humanity. And that's what that piece is about. Awesome. 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 Well, that, that's, that's great because I mean, that, that just shows that, you know, the two, four, two, um, have talent galore and, and you, you, you are one of those leading the way in, in your space. Oh, wow, thank you very in much. Particular. And your Thanks narrations, we didn't have uh, a narration per se to, to play for people, but um, I've, I've seen you do one or two um, audio books and that's where I get this thing about your expressionism and stuff like that, because just watching you it's the story. It's a story. You don't even have to listen to what you're saying. That, that keeps you going. It keeps you afloat. You're doing and, and tackling everything. That's and funny. So Ralph is saying uh, gas was five dollars per gallon. Now it's six. That's in the states because yeah. here it's six, six thirty, six, six forty. Something. No, like that's about what it is here in Southern California. It's between okay. it's between you know five fifty and six fifty depending on what kind of gas you get. Yeah, well, I own is just one tier, um, high grade. We don't do any of the low grade stuff. Yeah, people don't realize that either. But anyhow, you know, but that's yeah. They, I'm gonna they, say thank you to DJ. To thank you to DJ Legend. I appreciate that. He also wants to let you know he's put his picture up. Oh, okay, cool. The story. Your story shows, okay, a lot of guts and no fear in trying to do what you want to do. Props to you. Yeah, cool. I appreciate that. When, Thank when you. When you come back in town or when he's in your part of the world, then I'll let him. Yeah, absolutely. Please connect us. Please. Yeah. Cool. All right. And anybody, anybody that anybody listening or watching 
can reach out to me on social media. It's I'm, 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 you know, I'm reachable. If I don't get back to you right away, it's just because I'm uh, blessed with a lot of work or I'm swamped. Um, if you don't hear back from me right away, don't, don't take it personally. And you know, if, if a week goes by and for some reason you haven't heard from me in a week, then just ping me again. It's just that I'm just overloaded. But um, if that, if, if, if it takes me that long, that's the reason why. Um, but I, I invite people to reach out to me. You know, I, one of my cousins is, is um, I cousins, second cousins, I guess, second or third cousins. He's the, he's the child of a cousin of mine. Um, but you know, he's, he's been interested in, in pursuing acting has been asking me, how can he, how can he begin doing that in Nassau? What steps can he take to sort of begin studying or begin looking or, you know, what can he do? And, and, you know, it's, it's my pleasure to, to pass it on, you know? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Cool. So I can't wait for this next production, right? And so, um, hopefully the Bahamas community will, will open the doors so that you could go and do some stuff here. And sure. So we could inspire, because to me, about 60% of the population in the last general election was under uh, 40. Yeah. And, and most of those are creatives, are coming in the creative space, as they mm-hmm. call them. Mm-hmm. But we're not maximizing that space, the, the potential yeah. that that body of people provide. And so um, it's a good thing. Yeah. Right? And hats off to you know, people out there who are helping already in that space. Cool. So is there anything you want to say to, to the general public before we um, um, you go receive? Just that, the, well, I want to thank you for having me on and for, for talking. And it's nice, it's nice to, I mean, this is the longest we've talked. I mean, most of the time when we get together, it's with a lot of other classmates. So this is right. the most time we've had one-on-one. So it's a real pleasure. Um, and uh, I, even though I live here, because this is where my work is, and I'm, 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 I still keep proximity to LA so that I'm able to do LA jobs from time to time um, and able to have the career that I have. Uh, I miss home and I uh, am very, very proud to be, proud to be a Bahamian. And it's mm-hmm. something that, that it's one of the first things I tell people um, every time I meet them. And it's one of the things that has given me, has given me an edge in, um, even in my narration work, you know, the work, the first couple of books I did, I got hired because I was from the Caribbean and, um, it, and they wouldn't have known that unless I told them that, uh, I am, I'm, I'm proud of my heritage and any amount of opportunity I have to give back to where I come from. I, um, I want to, so please reach out and, but please know that um, I love you and I love my home and I'm, and I'm just so happy that uh, we got a chance to talk today. Awesome, much appreciated. And thank you for taking the time to share with everybody so that, you know, we could try and raise this lid and take Amen. the to, to a new level. And everybody around the world who reaches, um, who you touch and your, your voice touches and your work touches, could we could raise so we could build a better world as Michael Jackson talks about. That is my wish too. Thank you. I think that's a good wish. Yeah. Awesome. So everybody on social media, thank you kindly for joining us. Um, Thank you. Everybody stay safe. Um, Be well, subscribe, like, follow, share, share, share. share. And if you want to watch more of the videos and so forth and check out um, Ronnie on his different links that he had up earlier, you could, just zoom back and see them or click on mm-hmm. click on them. We'll put them in the description also. So forward. Cool. What's that? I was just saying follow me. Oh, yeah, follow <laughs> me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So Madam Producer? Take us out. <laughs> Enjoy the show? Then subscribe to us for more educational and inspirational content. Ring the bell so you never miss a show. Let's change the narrative, 242.